In this video, we shall be finding the method of moment for the gamma distribution. So for more on this topic, you need to subscribe to this channel. Solution. Of course, what is given here is the mean and this is the variance. But for method of moment, mu 1 1, which is the population mean, is equal to the sample mean. And the solution for the method of moment is when the population mean is equal to the sample mean. The population mean for the gamma distribution is equal to the expected value of x. And the expected value of x is alpha beta. Also, the Sample mean is equal to 1 all over n summation xi, which we know as the mean. So let's take this as our equation 1 and this as our equation 2. We can say combining, combining equation 1 and equation 2. If we combine these two, we have that x bar is equal to alpha beta. Let's take this as our equation star because we'll come back to it. Also, for the second moment, we know that the population mean is equal to the sample mean again. Meanwhile, the population mean in this case is equal to the expected value of x squared. Why the sample mean? The sample mean is equal to 1 all over n summation of x bar xi squared. We still take this as our equation 3 and this as our equation 4 because we still combine them. But it is very difficult to get this. Except we recall that the variance of x is equal to the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x all squared. Then this is also this. The next thing to do is to make this the subject of formula. The expected value of x squared will be the variance of x of course, if this goes over to this place, we'll get plus the expected value of x all squared. So what is the variance? The variance is already given here. Yeah. The variance is alpha beta squared plus what is the expected value? The expected value is alpha beta. The expected value is alpha beta all squared, which is equal to the expected value of x squared. So it means that we can still open this. The expected value of x squared is equal to alpha beta plus alpha squared. If you open the bracket, beta squared. The next thing to do is for me to combine equation 3 and equation 4. So we write here, combining equation 3 and equation 4. So when we combine them, we are combining these two. Of course, we know that the expected value of x squared is this. Why? That of the sample mean is this. So the next thing to do is to, if we combine them, we get alpha beta squared plus alpha squared beta squared to be equal to this, 1 all over n summation of xi squared. So this is what we we'll get. Then, if we go to this, we can recall from the equation star. Recall from equation star. 
which is this. We report that the mean is equal to alpha beta, which implies that alpha is equal to the mean all over beta. So we just substitute this alpha into this equation. Anywhere we see alpha, we put x over beta. So that we can get one of the estimates. So wherever we see alpha, this alpha, we put x bar all over beta. So the first one, we have alpha here. So we have x bar all over beta multiplied by beta squared plus And here we see alpha, we put x bar all over beta. Of course, there is square here multiplied by beta squared, which is equal to 1 all over n summation of xi squared. So this can cancel this. So we we'll left with x bar plus x bar squared. If we open the bracket, all over beta squared multiplied by beta squared to be equal to 1 all over n summation of xi squared. So this can cancel this. We will now be left with x bar. Okay. Sorry. There is x bar multiplied by beta because this cancelled this. So we're left with x bar beta plus x bar x bar squared to be equal to 1 all over n summation of xi squared. Of course, this can go over to this other side to give us x bar beta to be equal to, if this goes over to this side, we'll have 1 all over n summation of xi squared minus x bar squared. We can still write this to be x bar beta to be equal to 1 all over n summation of xi minus x bar all squared. So, how do we get the better estimate? It's just to make the better the subject of the formula. So, making the better the subject of the formula makes it an estimate. So, we have from here, we come over to this side. Making beta the subject of formula, we have beta estimates to be equal to 1 all over n summation of xi minus x bar all squared all over x bar. This is what we get. Now, we've gotten beta. What of the alpha? We are asked to find alpha and beta estimates for the gamma distribution. To obtain alpha, we recall from equation star. We recall from equation star that x bar is equal to alpha beta. This is x bar. So the first time we use alpha, the first time we use alpha, this time we are asked to estimate for beta. We've gotten better estimates. Now we will be looking for alpha estimates. It then means that beta will be equal to x bar all over alpha. So that is what we get. 
we move over to this side so that we can get our alpha we move over to this side So, wherever we see beta, we put x bar over alpha here. So, from this uh, method of moment, wherever we see beta, we put x bar all over alpha. So, it means x bar all over alpha is equal to 1 all over n summation of x i minus x bar all squared all over x bar. If we cross multiply, we'll get 1 all over alpha to be equal to 1 all over n summation of x i minus x bar all squared all over x bar squared. Of course, alpha estimate will be x bar squared all over 1 all over n summation of x i minus x bar all squared. So this is the estimate for alpha. So this is how the alpha and beta for the gamma distribution of method of moment can be gotten. So these procedures are the procedures needed to obtain the method of moment for the alpha and beta estimates. For more on this topic, you need to subscribe to this channel.